Hi and hello everyone. So let us discuss another session of Fantastic Five MCQs for NEET PG and FMG. Now let us start with the first MCQ and stay till the last to understand a very important concept and like pharmacology easily. So the first question is which of the following is contraindication of mannitol? Contraindication means where we should not give mannitol. Options are acute congestive glaucoma, impending renal failure, raised intracranial pressure and pulmonary edema so you have five seconds of time to answer this so if you are telling the answer is d pulmonary edema then you are correct now first of all what is mannitol mannitol belongs to osmotic diuretic so an osmotic diuretic attracts water and keeps water inside the blood vessel and that increases extracellular fluid that increases blood volume and that increase in blood volume will increase workload on the heart now where it is used number one mannitol is used in acute congestive glaucoma it is a drug of choice mannitol is also used in impending renal failure that means when there is oliguria still the kidney is working mannitol also used in raised intracranial pressure particularly it is a drug of choice for cerebral edema apart from that where do you use mannitol mannitol is also used in dialysis disequilibrium syndrome dialysis disequilibrium syndrome it is a problem where dialysis is done quickly and we use mannitol to treat that and the last option where we use mannitol is to manage poisoning so in case of poisoning we want to remove the poison quickly by using diuretic then we use mannitol so let me repeat two conditions drug of choice for acute congestive glaucoma drug of choice for cerebral edema but it is not used in pulmonary edema why let us understand coming to contraindications of mannitol number one it should not be given if there is cerebral hemorrhage if there is bleeding don't give it it will worsen that second it is contraindicated in anuria already the kidney has failed no urine don't give it third it should not be given in left ventricular failure or acute pulmonary edema why on this because i told you it increases blood volume it increases workload on the heart now what happens in left ventricular failure this is the heart and this is the left ventricle now you know that this is connected with the lungs and this is connected with the lungs now whenever left ventricular failure occurs it cannot work properly the pressure goes back into the lungs and there is accumulation of fluid in the lung and that is called pulmonary edema now in that case if i give mannitol mannitol will increase blood volume and increase the workload on the heart and already heart is failing if you give more workload the heart will fail further and the edema pulmonary edema will increase so it will worsen the pulmonary edema that's why it is contraindicated in pulmonary edema so the answer for this question is option d pulmonary edema moving on to the second mcq drug approved for use in diarrhea associated with antiretroviral therapy for hiv or aids so it's a fact based question try to answer it metaclopramide crofelimer lopiramide is according if you are answering crofelimer then you are 100% correct so crofelimer is a chloride channel inhibitor it is a chloride channel inhibitor and that is used to manage diarrhea due to hiv drugs diarrhea due to antiretroviral therapy for example if we are using a drug by the name lopinavir and patient has diarrhea then we can give crofelimer which inhibits chloride channels in the intestine metoclopramide is an antiemetic it's a d2 blocker and by blocking this it has antiemetic property but the problem is it crosses blood brain barrier the drug can cause acute dystonia now you have to tell me in the comment section what is the treatment for this 
acute dystonia caused by metaclopramide. Lopiramide is an opioid. It is not going to cross blood-brain barrier. And it is used to manage traveler's diarrhea. Traveler's diarrhea. As well as non-infected diarrheas. Non-infective diarrhea, lopiramide is used. But please remember, lopiramide is contraindicated in infected diarrhea and children less than 4 years. Coming to the last drug, bisacodyl. Bisacodyl is a purgative. It's a stimulant purgative. And it is used to manage constipation. It is used to manage constipation. So the answer for this question is B. Crow Felimer. The answer is Crow Felimer. Now coming to the next MCQ, an antimicrobial MCQ for us, drug of choice for diphtheria carriers. Option erythromycin, rifampicin, clindamycin, ampicillin. So try to answer this. If you are telling erythromycin, then you are right. Erythromycin is the drug of choice for diphtheria carriers. But what is the treatment for a case of diphtheria? Suppose the patient comes early, the best treatment is the diphtheria antitoxin. So you can give the antitoxin. Number two, we can give the antibiotics. Two antibiotics are given. Macrolides are more important than penicillin. Both are given, so macrolides are preferred. Among macrolides, we have two options. Either you can give erythromycin or azithromycin to treat the diphtheria cases. So treatment, this is the treatment for diphtheria. Now what you have to tell me here is, if there is typhoid carrier, typhoid carrier, tell me what is the drug of choice for typhoid carriers. Yes, I am waiting for your answers. So moving on to the next question. This is a case based question. Uh, very interesting case very difficult to solve but you will solve it don't worry and overdose victim presents to the emergency department so what we are dealing with overdose of a drug there is increase in heart rate there is decrease in blood pressure then pupils are dilated patient is lethargy and upon arrival to ICU patient had generalized tonic clonic seizure patient is having seizure and for that seizure, patient is given diazepam and phosphenidine. Which of the following is the likely intoxication? So the drug which was taken increases the heart rate, decreases the BP. It will cause midriasis and can cause seizures. So what is the drug? I will take up one by one. Ethyl alcohol, morphine, astaminophen, amitriptyline will rule out and come to the answer. Let us take up ethyl alcohol. Ethyl alcohol is a CNS depressant. So patient who is intoxicated with alcohol are drowsy. They have gastritis. They develop hypoglycemia. They may develop stupor. They are unresponsive. And they may go for coma and death. The treatment for this is gastric lavage and then correct fluid and electrolytes give IU fluids fluid and electrolyte and then most of them have hypoglycemia give IV thiamine plus IV glucose and if you want to remove it fast you can do dialysis so none of the symptom is telling about the pupil so this is ruled out coming to morphine whenever you think of morphine morphine is a opioid so opioid they cause meiosis so pinpoint pupil so this is also ruled out since we have meiotic pupil in opioid poisoning so since we are discussing let me tell you what is seen in morphine poisoning patient will go for cpr coma c for coma p for pinpoint pupil and r for respiratory depression and there will be three hypo in op poisoning sorry opioid poisoning hypothermia temperature goes down Hypotension, BP goes down, reflex, hyperreflexia. What is the antidote for this? 
the antidote for this is naloxone so we have ruled out two options not ethyl alcohol not morphine coming to astaminophen astaminophen is nothing but our paracetamol overdose of paracetamol patient will develop nausea vomiting and patient will have abdominal pain because of hepatotoxicity so patient will have hepatotoxic effect now there is nothing regarding pupil here and that is also being ruled out and what is the antidote for this tell me the antidote the antidote is called n acetylcysteine NAC stands for n cysteine. Now tell me the toxic metabolite which is produced, produced, and that is your, that is your assignment. Tell me the toxic metabolite, and what is the rationale of giving NAC in managing paracetamol overdose? Tell me that. So once we have ruled out all these things, then obviously the answer will become the option D, amitriptyline. Let us check whether that is right. Now, amitriptyline belongs to tricyclic antidepressant used in major depression. They inhibit norlin and serotonin reuptake. They cause alpha blockade leading to hypotension, histamine blockade leading to sedation, muscarinic blockade leading to anticholinergic or anti-muscarinic adverse effect like atropine. So this is the reason patient will have increase in heart rate. Patient will be confused, similar to atropine mm -hmm. actions patient will have seizures and due to increase in heart rate patient will have arrhythmias and this patient already the seizures have been managed uh, with the diazepam and phosphonidine arrhythmias if it is ventricular arrhythmia we can give lignocaine if the arrhythmias are atrial arrhythmias we can give beta blocker like propranolol but what is the antidote for this poisoning the antidote for that is sodium bicarbonate what does sodium bicarbonate do number one it treats acidosis but second reason is it will prevent arrhythmias it will not treat it will prevent occurrence of arrhythmia in tca overdose that is why the antidote for tca overdose is sodium bicarbonate so we understood all these things and came to the conclusion the answer is d amitriptyline extensive discussion but worthy and you'll understand poisonings easily now tell me which poisonings you see dilated people which poisonings you see dilated people and tell me which poisoning you see the constituted people that is myotic people so please put that in comment section coming to the last question general pharma about highly plasma protein bound drug which of the following statement is true now what do you mean by plasma protein drug this is a drug which is not bound to anybody free drug it can bind to a protein called plasma protein so if it binds to plasma protein then we call it as plasma protein bound drug so it is in equilibrium now please understand free drug is the one which is available for distribution metabolism and excretion and also for action and bound drug is not available for all these things right but they are asking highly plasma protein bound drug for example if i take diazepam diazepam is highly plasma protein binding means 90 percent of the drug if i give 100 drug 90 percent are bound and only 10 percent are free that means only 10 percent will be working they can be distributed, metabolized, excreted. So they are asking if a drug is highly plasma protein bound drug, what is a true statement? Number one, decreases GFR. Yes, obviously it's a true statement because if a drug is plasma protein bound drug in the kidney, plasma protein bound drug cannot get filtered. If it is not filtered, it is less clear. So there is decrease in GFR because plasma protein binding makes the drug big in size and cannot get filtered. It's a true statement. Increased tubular secretion. No, it will not affect the tubular secretion. Those drugs which escaped filtration, they come to the vasorector and they become free and then go back to the lumen. That is called secretion. So that is not going to get affected with plasma protein binding much. Now, high volume of distribution. Now, what is volume of distribution? 
if a drug stays in the blood vessel then it is low vd if a drug stays away from the blood vessel high vd what makes a drug to stay more in the blood vessel if it is water soluble if it is big in size and if it is plasma protein bound if it is plasma protein bound because these drugs cannot go out of the blood vessel easily what makes a drug highly volume of distribution lipid soluble small size free drug and tissue protein bound these have high volume of distribution so since drug is plasma protein bound it has low vd not high vd so this is also ruled out this is also ruled out now what about drug interactions there will be drug interaction not more there will be less drug interaction this is also a true statement but if i want to choose between them i'll choose option a because there will be drug interaction let me take an example warfarin is highly plasma protein bound suppose warfarin is bound to plasma protein if i add a drug called sulfonamides sulfonamides can kick warfarin out and increase the free warfarin level now tell me if there is more warfarin in the circulation what will happen overdose toxicity patient will have bleeding so there will be drug interactions but since we have two options to choose the perfect answer should be decrease in gfr drug interaction won't be so much but it will be lesser even that statement is true but in the exam you have to choose the best answer so we'll go for that so with that uh, we are done with uh, today's fantastic five mcqs it was extensive but you have to study these things to crack the toughest exams okay any doubt you can ask me in the comment section thank you all take care mm -hmm.